Often people ask the question, is digital media good or bad for democracy? And in many respects, that's the wrong question. There, there clearly are ways in which it will be helpful, and there also are risks and problems that we see every day. We know, for example, that young people and all people get tons of information online and will increasingly get a greater and greater share of their information online. And they have more access than they ever have before to perspectives and information. And at the same time, it's not at all clear that we're better informed. And so it became really clear that if we really want to prepare young people to be active participants in the society, we have to be understanding the ways they're engaging and participating with the new media. And we also have to think about ways we can support productive participation. In society, there are a lot of issues and challenges we face that we can't solve as individuals, that we have to work on collectively. Sometimes these problems are addressed through actions at the state level, and sometimes they're addressed through community organizations or through actions at the local level. But ultimately, we can't solve all the problems we face or, or achieve the potential that we see if we're always working as individuals. And that's why civic and political life matter, because they give us a way to deal with some of those issues. Because so much of civic and political life is now connected to new media, it's important to think about the ways in which the digital media may be relevant both in helping us to prepare young people to be involved in those ways, but it's also crucial that we figure out whether or not we're preparing them to use the digital media productively when they get engaged. The digital media is key here. It's key for a couple reasons. It's key because a lot of the forms of participation that young people will enact are going to be enacted via digital media. That's how they're going to get engaged. That's the way they're going to express their opinions. That's where they're going to get their information. That's how they're going to be recruited. That's how they're going to recruit others. And it's key that the qualities of participation will matter, whether or not when they do interact with people who disagree, whether or not they do it in a way that is productive. I mean, they can certainly disagree, but are they doing it in ways that, that just turn into flame wars? Or are they doing it in ways that lead to real understanding and growth and, and maybe even some recognition of the value of other people's viewpoints? So there are a bunch of things that we found in our research that I think go against conventional wisdom. One of the first is that we tend to think of participation in formal politics as the way in which people learn about formal politics, and certainly that's true. There's no doubt that when young people participate in a protest or work on a campaign that it can teach them a great deal and that they often get more involved after that. But it's also true that interests in things that often have nothing to do with politics can build bridges to engagement in civic and political life uh, in some very powerful ways. Frequently, conventional wisdom holds that those interests are distractions. So kids who play games are less likely to be involved because they're sitting in a dark basement somewhere playing some mindless game over and over and over again. Or kids who spend a lot of time on a social networking site or pursuing a hobby or some special interest they have are so focused on those things that they never get involved in the broader society and issues connected to the broader society. What we find, however, is the opposite. What we find is that the kids who are engaged in non-political, interest-driven activities, things like hobby clubs, things like online gaming that has multiple players interacting at the same time, what Mimi Ito calls interest-driven activity, what, what Henry Jenkins calls engagement in a participatory culture, that even when those interests and forms of participation are non-political, that they build bridges to a great deal of civic and sometimes political engagement so that kids are more likely to volunteer in their community, they're more likely to contribute to charity or to raise funds for charity, they're more likely to be part of expressive activities to work with others on community issues. Some games actually make people the mayor of a town or the, the president of the country or engage them in doing any number of things that we think of as simulating civic and political life. When young people do that, we found very real benefits. So 
So for example, we think that that teaches them skills that matter. We think it gives them connections to issues so they hear about things they wouldn't have heard about. And it gives them a sense of the power of collective action. And all of those things lead to greater involvement. So if those lead to greater involvement, they're real implications for people who run youth organizations, for people in schools, to say, are there ways that we can leverage some young people's interests to teach those skills and to build those bridges? both by connecting civic and political life directly to their interests and showing them why they matter, but even in addition, just making sure that interests are something we pay attention to when we think about how to educate young people and we think about what opportunities to provide for them. And we can use some of those structures, structures embedded in gaming, for example, that are, that are quite compelling to young people to help them reach levels of expertise connected to the content we care about. That's going to require an openness to new ways of thinking about what it means to teach and to learn. So while we know that the way young people are participating with the new media is likely to change many aspects of their civic and political life, exactly how this will play out remains quite uncertain. While we've begun to learn some things about these issues, there's really a great deal more we can learn. And one of the exciting new initiatives we're working on is to form a research network funded by the MacArthur Foundation that focuses on youth and participatory politics. In that work, we're asking four big questions. We're asking, is the very nature of the public sphere changing as a result of the new media? We're also just asking, what are young people doing? and how are they doing it? How often are they engaged in various activities? We hear a lot of reports, but we don't really know how often are young people doing some of the kinds of participatory activities that we think may be important. Of course, we're also looking then at the relationship between those forms of participation with the new media and various forms of civic and political engagement. And lastly, we're asking, what can people who want to make sure that we tap more of the potential and avoid more of the problems, what can they do? What interventions are possible in educational institutions, in after-school programs, by parents, by community groups? What can be done?